Good morning guys or good afternoon. It's Mr. Pointer and today we are going to be doing a math lesson on fractions. Now before we get into the math lessons, I want to do a quick review on some multiplication. All right, the question says, I'll give you guys a chance to go get your uh, math journals and whatever you need in order to solve this problem. So grab a sheet of scrap paper or your math journal. First question is, there are seven pigs in a barn. How many legs are in the barn? Well, first thing we have to ask ourselves is how many legs does a pig have? Well, if a, left, if a pig has four legs and we have seven of them, we wanna know how many legs are there, we should start thinking about some numbers that are gonna be in our equation. So we're going to think about the factors of seven and four, because we have seven pigs with four legs. So in order for us to solve this problem, we're going to take seven and we're going to multiply it times four. Now we know seven times four is 28. But it's always important to show your work. So we're going to start by drawing seven models. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, with four in each model. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then we'll count all the dots up inside of each of the uh, circles, and you'll also get 28. That's also good to use a second model. So in our second model, instead of making an array today, we're going to do some repeated addition. So we need seven fourths. So seven plus seven plus seven plus seven. Well, the first seven plus seven gives us 14. 14 plus seven again gives us 21, and the 21 plus seven gives us 28. So there are 28 legs in all. As we continue to review, I want to go back over some of our shapes. This question tells us to draw two different pentagons. Now, who remembers when we talked about a pentagon as one of our major buildings that we have in the city of DC? It's one of our government buildings. In a pentagon, the word pent means five. So it's a shape with five sides. I'm going to see you guys draw two different pentagons. Go ahead and get started. Remember, five-sided shape is a pentagon. So the easy shape to make for a pentagon is one, two, three, four, five. Looks like a house. That's an easy shape to make as a pentagon. Think of another way we can make a pentagon. We can draw it very similar to our government building. One, two, three, four, five. That's another way to make a pentagon. That's not, <laughs> it's not too straight, but it's not our context. All right, now let's get on to our lesson for today. Now, moving forward for the, for the, for the next foreseeable weeks, we are gonna not only be working on fractions, but working on equivalent fractions. And when we say that word equivalent, we're talking about fractions that are equal to each other. We're gonna start with some easy shapes today. I want you guys to draw four rectangles, and I want you to try your best to draw them all the same size. So we got one, two, three, four. Those are our four rectangles. Now, we did a similar activity like this when we were at school, and we actually had fraction strips. Well, today we don't have fraction strips, so we have to draw ours. 
So our first shape is going to be considered a whole. This is one whole. It's worth one. That next shape, we're going to divide into two pieces. So if this shape is divided into two pieces, what do you think each side is worth? If it's divided into two pieces, each side is worth a half. So we got a half here and a half here. This next shape, we are going to divide into four pieces. So once again, if a shape is divided into four pieces, each piece will be worth a fourth. In our final shape, we are going to divide into eight pieces. And of course, each piece is worth an eighth. Now, we're going to be looking for some equivalent fractions out of the fraction strips we just created. So let's first look at the half. If you look at the half, how many fourths do I need to make a half? Well, to be equivalent to a half, I need one fourth, two fourths. So that tells me that one half is equivalent to two fourths. Let's see if you see any other equivalent fractions on this fraction bar. Hmm, when I look down here to my eighths, I need one, two, three, four eighths to be equivalent to one half. So one half equals two fourths, which also equals four eighths. These are all considered to be equivalent fractions. Now there's one other thing that I want to show you. This is a trick that works when you have a unit fraction. Now we talked about what a unit fraction was earlier in school. A unit fraction is any time you have a fraction that has a one as a denominator. So let's say we have one fourth and one half. And we're comparing one fourth to one half. Now we always say we compare fractions using the greater, less than, or equal sign. We always want to say that the Pac-Man or the mouth would want to eat the larger fraction. So we have one half and we have one fourth. Well, here's a rule when you're comparing fractions. If the numerators are the same, the fraction with the smaller denominator is the larger fraction. If the numerators are the same, the fraction with the smaller denominator is the larger fraction. So one half is larger than one fourth. Let's try another one. See if we can use that same concept. This time we're going to pair one third to one fifth. Once again, our numerators are the same. So the fraction with the smaller denominator is the larger fraction. Now this trick works anytime you have similar numerators. Here's our wrap-up question for the day, and then there will be an activity that I want you guys to complete inside of Google Classroom. It says, Amy and her brother both bought a peanut butter and jelly sandwich for lunch. Amy ate three-fourths of her sandwich, and her brother ate one-fourth of his. Who ate more? So this time we're comparing three-fourths to one-fourth. And we're going to apply a similar rule as we used before. In this particular instance, when the denominators are the same, the fraction that has the larger numerator is the larger fraction. So we compare 3 fourths to 1 fourth, 3 fourth is the larger fraction. Let's try it again with another set of fractions. And try to remember that rule, it will help you. So this time we're going to compare 5 sixths to 3 sixths. Once again, our denominators are the same. So the fraction with the larger numerator is the larger fraction. 
Hey guys, be safe and keep an eye out for my science lesson as well.